It was 40 years ago this fall that George Rogers ran his way into college football history. And for nearly three decades since winning South Carolina's only Heisman Trophy Award, he's been changing the lives for over 500 families. Welcome into the 29th annual George Rogers Foundation charity event. He's Mitch Brown. I'm Mike Eubin for the first time ever. First time ever. Gotta get that Boston accent right off the top in case some of these people are you know, not familiar with that. George's Foundation, this charity event is being brought to you right here on Watch Fox into your living room. Absolutely, Mike. And with the coronavirus canceling both George's charity golf outing as well as his in-person live and silent auction events, Watch Fox has teamed up with the George Rogers Foundation to not only keep his event alive to raise that money for first-generation college students, but to also celebrate George's 40-year anniversary mm -hmm. of winning the Heisman Trophy. Hard to believe it's been that long. Yeah, you mentioned that, so how can you do that? Well, before we get into tonight's program, which will feature a long list of special guests and musical performances, let's remember why we're here tonight. That is to raise money. All night long, you can make donations by visiting the Foundation site, which you can find on WACH.com in honor of George celebrating 40 years. We encourage you to make a $40 donation, but of course, any amount is welcome. And on top of that, you can also take part in this year's silent auction, bidding for prizes such as a signed basketball from USC coach Don Staley, Ooh. Gamecock greats Connor Shaw and Marcus Lattimore, and of course, plenty of other items signed by the man himself, Mr. George Rogers. You can make a bid tonight. Uh, I, I Maybe. think so. For a good Get cause. So, out. I mean, for a good cause, go. why not? It would go. Well, <laughs> we're going to continue this show. We're going to continue to show you that website throughout the rest of the night. But without further ado, let's welcome South Carolina's only Heisman Trophy winner, George Rogers, to explain more about his foundation. My mom was a very, very smart, and she wanted to go to college. She didn't get a chance to go to college, but she learned to play the piano and was very, very smart, very uh, talented. And uh, being that uh, I'm, a, I'm a mama's boy, I, I, I followed my mama's footsteps, and I, I said I wanted to give back. And this is one way, it's been our 29th year of doing, having this scholarship, and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just appreciative of, of the way people help me give people money to go to school. I thought maybe after the first three or four times I did it, and then it starts saying, well, you know, you, you really are helping people, you know, to, to, uh, to go back to school and get a, and get, and get a scholarship, or, or, or even people that can't, maybe not get my scholarship, but go out and, and get a scholarship from somewhere else. But, you know, I'm just glad I, I, in this way, I'm able to, you know, use my name and be able to get kids in school and let them know that, hey, it, was, it wasn't easy for me. I mean, you know, even though I got a scholarship at the University of South Carolina, but it wasn't easy. And, and, and I went back and I got my degree, and that's what it's all about. One reason you should donate because, you know, you're giving back. That's, that's the important part of it. And, you, and, you, and, you, and you're helping somebody that, that's really, you know, in their family, hadn't had nobody graduate. And, and then it, it'll be a trend to start for them, you know, from later on in life. Because if you ain't got nobody, if you ain't got nobody used to going to school, and then how are you gonna tell your family people that, you know, hey, uh, well, ain't nobody else been to school, well, here's a chance you can. Here's a chance indeed. Well, you know what, since being founded in 1991, the George Rogers Foundation has raised over millions of dollars for first generation college students, including a quarter million in scholarships just over the past five years. And tonight, you can help George. You can help continue that. Well, our first guest of the night this is a man who's been part of this event ever since arriving in Columbia in December of 2015. He's the first coach in Gamecock history to lead USC to three bowl games in his first three seasons as a head coach and will be entering his fifth season at the helm here in Columbia. The George Rogers Foundation is pleased to welcome back the head coach of USC football, Will Muschamp. Hi, I'm Will Muschamp, head football coach, University of South Carolina. I'm absolutely honored again to take part of the George Rogers Foundation. Uh, George, your foundation has done a wonderful job of first generation college students and allowing those people, those young people, an opportunity uh, to, to have an experience to go to college. And really appreciate that. You've, you've meant so much to the city of Columbia, to the state of South Carolina, the only Heisman Trophy winner in the state of South Carolina history. You've meant so much to the university and, and to me personally since I've been here in Columbia. And I appreciate everything that you do and how you positively affect everybody that comes around you with that beautiful smile you got. I'll never forget our first meeting, and I've told this story many a times. You sized me up a little bit. You said, Coach, did you play defensive back? I said, yes, sir. 
Uh, he said, if, if you had tried to tackle me, I'd given you a Dago hit. And I said, what is a Dago hit? And he said, if you had tried to tackle me and after I ran over you, you'd be looking through the top of your helmet and saying, there he go. So, George, I appreciate you. The university appreciates you. Columbia, the state of South Carolina, glad you're a Gamecock. Take care. Oh, man, the way he tells that story, I can definitely see George a, saying that to Coach Muschamp. A Dago hit. Oh, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not sleeping on Coach Muschamp because I, I think back in the day, I think he would be able to do it. We'd probably have to do something, which we would call back in college, which would be sawing legs, which basically means you're going for those thigh boards. You're oh, yeah. trying to take those legs down. But that's, uh, that's a pretty big tree, though. I think he could, he could do it, though. I wouldn't count him out, though. You know, he was, uh, he was nice back in the day, taking down uh, Big George, though, in his prime. That certainly wouldn't be easy. No, that wouldn't be easy. And you mentioned, you know, you wouldn't count Coach Boom out then in his prime. I think you can't count out our next guest. Not during his playing days at Army back in the mid-70s. But when you look back at him today, he just looks like he could still lace him up. Oh, yes, he certainly does. Our next guest arrived at USC just a year ago, becoming the 29th and current president of the University of South Carolina. He's a retired U.S. Army. Army officer who served as the 59th superintendent of the West Point. And like you said, Mike, played football for the Army Black Knights, President Robert Caslin. Since 1935, the Heisman Trophy has been awarded to college football's most outstanding player. In its 85-year history, only 39 colleges or schools have had a Heisman Trophy winner. In 1980, the University of South Carolina was proud to join this elite group of colleges when one of our own university icons, George Rogers, won the Heisman Trophy. George is an incredible figure in our university community. He has always been involved with our university and is often seen on our campus. George never meets a stranger, and he has built so many friendships within our community. George is also known for his incredible generosity, giving back to so many first-generation college students through the George Rogers Foundation and supporting our university student-athletes and students. He understands the importance of ensuring that all students, regardless of background or circumstance, have the opportunity to pursue higher education. We are extremely proud that his son Trey is a South Carolina alumnus and his other son Thomas will be a freshman in the Honors College this fall. We can't wait to welcome Thomas to campus and to continue George's incredible legacy at our university. Well, it's been 40 years since George won the Heisman Trophy. His legacy as a Gamecock athlete is a tremendous one, but his legacy as a student advocate, community leader, and friend to our university is even more inspiring. Thank you, George, for all that you've done for the University of South Carolina. Forever to thee. Thank you, George, and thank you, President Kaslin, for taking the time, because as you can imagine, during all this stuff going on with the pandemic and ready for school, yeah. not easy. Yeah, there's a lot going on over there, a lot of moving parts with South Carolina coming back to school and trying to work these things out so it's safely uh, for all the students and faculty on campus. I'm trying to have some football too, but that's a story for another day. We're just getting started here at the 29th Annual George Rogers Foundation Charity Event. But as we head into commercial break, George brings us back to that 1980 Heisman season, plus a special message for George from another Heisman Trophy winner. Take a listen. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. I don't know if I was ever thinking about winning the Heisman. Coach Carlin did a good job of, of when he done our uh, after the game kind of stuff. He kind of, you know, saying, well, if he don't win the Heisman Trophy, I don't know if they shouldn't have the Heisman Trophy. You know, different things like that. But I, I think, you know, our football team, my, my, my offensive line was really, really blocking hard, you know, just because we was in that kind of category of, of, of maybe even trying to uh, be enlisted as winning the Heisman. But, and, and finally, toward the end, you know, uh, they, we done, we done a pretty good job. I, I mean, 1,800 yards ain't, ain't, ain't too many, but <laughs> but those guys made me look good, though. They really did. Hey, what's up, George? Eddie George here, man. Wanted to say, man, I love you, brother, uh, like no other. You're one of my favorite Heisman brothers. And congratulations on your happy 40th anniversary. And thank you for sharing some of your secrets on how to make a delicious steak, as you can see right here over my shoulder, my brother. Thank you for showing me the secrets of a delicious steak. But God bless you, man. Take care and enjoy your day. Love you, my man. Welcome back to the 29th annual George Rogers Foundation Charity Event, where tonight's mission is to raise as much money as we can for first-generation college students. So how can you do that? Well, we'll remind you, in case you missed it out 
earlier on in the program. You can do so by making a donation on the George Rogers Foundation page, which you can find at the top of WACH.com all night long. Plus, you can bid for some pretty cool items. I don't know if a Mitch Brown jacket is on the list, but I do know that Herschel Walker, some Marcus Lattimore gear is on there. So be sure to head on over to that website. Continue to make those donations. But Mitch, on top of raising money, we're also celebrating George achieving something that was done four decades ago and hasn't been done since in this state. Yeah, Mike, and George brought some home South Carolina's only Heisman Trophy in 1980 when he rushed for a program record, get this, 1,781 Ooh. yards, a record that still stands today. Two people that had a chance to see it all up close was his former Gamecock teammate and fellow captain Chuck Allen and South Carolina Hall of Fame broadcaster Tommy Suggs. My recollection is that, <clears throat> you know, we would scrimmage in the preseason and, of course, some in the spring. Back, uh, back then, the spring practices were just brutal. I mean, every practice was in full pads, and we would have preseason practices. And my recollection of that is after Georgia's sophomore year, he was off limits. That he didn't, he didn't live scrimmage, we didn't tackle him. Um, so, yeah, it was like don't scratch the Cadillac. <laughs> A lot of people don't remember this, but George Rogers started out as a fullback in the um, some sort of an eye formation under Jim Carlin, and Johnny Wright was the tailback. And Johnny Wright um, got his leg hurt, his knee hurt. I think it was in North Carolina. Maybe it was a game before that. And so Jim Carlin had to do something, so he put Rogers at tailback. And so had it not been for the injury, George Rogers would have still been probably a fullback in the eye uh, blocking for, uh, I believe his name was, first name was Johnny Wright. And um, so the rest is history. I mean, for his size and his height and his speed, um, to me, George Rogers is the epitome of what you call a stud. There's no other way you can put it. No, simply put. <laughs> Mitch, I don't know about you, but when I see highlights like that, it makes me miss the fact that I didn't have an opportunity to be able to see football back then, especially in the SEC. Don't get me wrong, I like airing it out and this and that, but being able to run the football down your throat and know that it's going to come play after play, something special. Well, thank God for YouTube, right? Yeah. Because I mean, we've been able to see uh, so many highlights of George and other ground and pound running backs back in the day. Uh, and it's just something special about seeing that aggression and different type of intensity in the game back then. We well, mentioned some of those guys that used to be able to do that ground and pound. We're going to take another commercial break, but as we head into that break, we have another special guest who's going to be giving a message. But on the other side of this, another legendary game cock. Ray Tanner joins us, plus our first musical performance of the night from USC's own Patrick Davis. Stay with us. Hi, George. Herschel Walker here. I'm so happy to be a part of your annual charity event benefiting first-generation college students. 29 years. What an accomplishment. This fall got to be extra special because you're celebrating your 40th anniversary of the Heisman Trophy. What an accomplishment there as well. Hey, you and I participated in so many great events helping others like the Heisman House, Habitat for Humanity, the Cow Petty Charity Ride, where Herschel rode a motorcycle, you were in the van. Well, I tell you what, I know the University of South Carolina is proud of you, and I'm proud to call you my friend. So I encourage everyone to help the George Roger Foundation and George, I am still mad at you, and I'm ready to come after you because you're one of the only people to ever beat Herschel Walker in anything. Hey, I love you, brother. Welcome back into the show. When you talk about Gamecock legends, of course, George's name will be towards the top of that list, but he's in a group with some pretty good company. Yeah, not even including football players. There's Asia Wilson, Don Staley, Michael Roth, just to name a few. But Mitch, there's another one who probably doesn't have to pay for a drink anytime he hits up the town thanks to a pair of national titles. Yeah, he put down one hat in 2012 and picked up a new one less than a month later. Our next guest is a two-time College World Series national champion, coach and current USC director of athletics. Welcome in, Mr. Ray Tanner. Years, a lot of people are not remembered, but it was like yesterday, George won the Heisman Trophy, man. People from all walks of life, young and old, can tell you that, hey, there's George Rogers, he won the Heisman Trophy, and that's, that's a rarity. But for me, I think it's a rarity because, yes, he was a Hall of Fame football player. He was a Heisman Trophy winner but he is a Heisman Trophy player person. 
you know, that's the, the thing that has been so great. He's an institution at this university. He's always got the, the great smile. We're the Gamecocks. We're his Gamecocks. He has ownership. You know, he's still here. And uh, I think that just um, is so important that everybody feels connected to George. It's like George, uh, yes, he was a great football player. He would run you over to get to the end zone. But he's your friend. You know, and he's part of the family. What's your fondest memory so far with uh, Mr. Rogers? Well, I think, you know, one of, one of my fondest memories was, you know, he would sign autographs before football games. And, you know, he would visit with a lot of people. And I, I called him in, asked him to come see me in the office at the beginning of the next week. And I said, George, I, I would really like to do something better than what you're doing. I think he was a little bit surprised that I asked him to come see me, like, I've done something wrong and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say something negative, but you know, we had the George Rogers statue and it was like, you got to be, you got to be at the statue. You got to be with your people. You got to take pictures. You got to sign autographs you know, in your territory. That that's, um, that's where you need to be. And let's, uh, let's make it formal. Let's set hours. Let's do it the right way. And um, he was you know, excited to hear that. And um, it's been working great for us. Now, obviously, the coronavirus pandemic has hampered the way George mm-hmm. and the foundation would do things this year. I'm a little bummed because this is my this would have been my first, first gala, year. first golf tournament. Golf game was yeah. just getting informed, but going to miss out on those food and drinks and great music there. And Mitch, I'll say this. When Coach Boom got here, he said that he doesn't really golf that much, but we got Coach Boom out there, or at least George got Coach okay. Boom out there. So uh, looking forward to that event coming back next year but you mentioned you know there's no food no drinks no golf this year but uh, there is something that always takes place at George's foundation every year and we were able to add that tonight even if we're not there in person and that's some music some music from a USC alum who is well known in the Gamecock community please welcome Camden native Patrick Davis what's up big George Patrick Davis here and I just want to say congratulations uh, 40 years since that Heisman Trophy uh, which uh, brings a lot of uh, joy to all us Gamecock fans and also 29 years uh, with your foundation. Uh, incredible work, incredible work, brother. I miss you. I know all of Gamecock Nation uh, is, uh, is, is proud to have you, buddy. So uh, anyways, hope you're staying safe out there. And uh, since all the South Carolina folks, I even think the Clemson folks respect you, you know, for what you've done. But the South Carolina folks, so uh, we all love you. And this is a tune that I wrote that uh, my buddy Darius Rucker, another Gamecock, sang for me. Uh, this is a tune called L-O-V-E. We all love you, man. So here we go. Ask me 
what I want from the situation. It ain't complicated. No, you gotta love me like your favorite song. Like you love your whiskey strong. Like your daddy loves your mama, your mama loves your daddy, and a granny loves a Sunday morning. Love me like a honeybee. Loves the summertime in Tennessee. Like a farmer loves the rain and Rusty Davis loves the blues Ever be in love Let it do what it do George, I hope you're feeling the love today, and I hope we raise some money for the foundation tonight. All right, game cops. Nothing L-O-B-E love here. I said L-O-B-E love. I said L-O-B-E love. Patrick came on here and showed us up. Nobody's going to want to hear our voices anymore. Which, what would you do? You know, oh, maybe like I the do? pots and pans. I mean, that's what I'd probably do. Uh, I mean, I might be able to bust a little tune. A little like, something, not, something. Not, not like Patrick, though. It's awesome, awesome performance. All right, we're going to take another time out, but when we come back, we're rewinding the clocks to 1980. George relives winning South Carolina's only Heisman Trophy with stories you don't want to miss. Hey, George, it's me, Darius, and I can't believe it's been 40 years since you won the Heisman and brought such incredible recognition to the University of South Carolina. Man, you will always, always be one of my favorite players, and I, I can't wait to see the great things you're going to do for South Carolina. You're awesome, man. Congratulations. We always love you. Hey, George, it's Hayden Hurst. Congratulations on the 40th anniversary of winning the Heisman. Really appreciate everything you've done for Carolina football. Wishing you the best. Rise up and spurs up. Welcome back into the 29th annual George Rogers Foundation charity event on Watch Fox. The first time in this event's history mm. that it is being televised, which all of us at uh, Watch are extremely honored to say. Yeah, no question about it, Mitch. And it's crazy to think that when you look back, all right, this fall, it's going to be the 40-year anniversary since George not only won USC's only Heisman Trophy in the first, but the only one in this state. When you look at that, just all the great athletes this state has had over the years. Take the whole show to list them all. Mm, no question about that. So we heard earlier tonight, though, from Rogers' former teammate Chuck Allen and longtime USC broadcaster Tommy Suggs about that season. But now it's time to hear from George himself. Well, I think one of the, one of the, one of the things that hasn't been done is there have been no other eyes and trophy winner. I mean, that's, 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 that says a lot for that football team because you know, it, I don't know how many games we won. I think we won eight, maybe eight games and lost about four. But, you know, we played uh, Pitt, uh, who was Hugh Green and some of those guys, Ricky Jackson, some of those guys, was, which was a, a pretty good football team. And, uh, of course, they, well, they'll say that they let me get 100 yards at the end and they didn't get to play at the end of the game. But, you know, they beat us pretty good. But, you know, uh, football back then, to me, uh, we went out there and we, we did the best we could and, and to run the football. We wasn't a, a very good passing team, but we could throw. Uh, Gary Hopper was the coach. I mean, the coach right? was was the quarterback, but he he done really good. I love I love Gary Hopper. He was a great quarterback, and and we needed him because hey, I, I, I couldn't play quarterback. So, but we did we did pretty good though. We tried to um, we tried to win some games and we did the best we could. Oh, I tell you what, they wasn't easy, but but you know it's just that every day. Or every game that we played in, we knew what we had to do. And when you're playing football, hey, it's give and take now, all, all the, the whole time. And every once in a while, you know, you got to throw, but you know, hey, our bread and butter was running the football. They give the ball to Rogers, trying to sweep to the outside, cuts to the inside, 15, 10, all the way to the nine yard line. What a run! 
Run by Rogers. My office line. I was in, everybody's going. Everybody. I want everybody there. I want my whole offensive line there. In, in the and they, yeah, we went. They all went to the went to the uh, to the ceremony and everything, man. And I said, we did it. And that's what it was. We did it. It was the guys in front of me yeah, all the way. They 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 made me look good. Oh God, man, I was uh, where I you know I'm, I'm, I'm a country boy, you know, and uh, you know you know everything ain't so easy, but. You know, I had a coach that, that was real hard on me and made me realize uh, the kind of talent I have, uh, Coach Morris, and uh, he he just made me look good. I mean, you know, he told me what, what I needed to do, and, he, and I tell you what, he put that paddle on my butt too now. <laughs> I tell you what, he, he didn't play. We knew he didn't play, so he he, he turned me around. He, he turned me around and made me go the right way, and uh, well, fortunately for me, uh, you know, I, uh, Coach Carlin and the rest of the guys just made, just stayed on me, and we 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 we, we prevail. It's so interesting to hear him talk about his story and journey at South Carolina, and especially when you heard earlier uh, Tommy Suggs talking about uh, George starting out as a fullback in that <laughs> I formation, which uh, I wouldn't want to be the linebacker trying to pick him up. No, can you imagine that? <laughs> and, and he was a guy that could be able to do it all. We were able to see that, of course, over the years as a running back. When he retired, Mitch, or I shouldn't say retired, when he finished up his college career before going into the NFL, he was top five all time for rushing yards in college football. Now, of course, that's changed over the the last couple of years, but 5,204 yards. That is the most in USC history, On and that's ground. nothing. That's nothing to just overlook at. I mean, I don't, I don't care. Over the years, records are going to change, of course, yeah. but I mean, that's a record that has stayed at least at USC. No matter which way you slice it, that's a lot of yards right yep. there. So a lot of productivity from George, and it resulted in a Heisman. All right, we're about to hit another break, but still to come. USC down to New Orleans. Hear from one of George's former NFL teammates who recalls what it was like for George when he arrived as a young buck in the league. George, on this day as we celebrate 40 years of you winning the Heisman Trophy, the impact of your success is felt on and off the field. Know this, Gamecock Nation loves you, adores you, so keep making us proud and making an impact on our community. Thanks, George. Thanks for joining us tonight here on Watch Fox as we not only honor George Rogers on his 40 year anniversary since winning the Heisman, but more importantly, we're here to raise money for the George Rogers Foundation that benefits first generation college students. And we all know how special George was mm -hmm. at the University of South Carolina, but you go to shine on in the NFL as well. No question about that. And before we get into that, we just want to continue to remind you, go visit us at WACH.com. That's where you can find the way to be able to make your donations, be able to also be able to bid some, for some pretty cool items. Uh, Kerry Trapnell who's very close with this foundation for many years. Yep. He was able to get some really cool items, authentic items at that. So if you uh, sports nuts out there want to be able to get something, be sure to make a bid tonight. But like you said, with the NFL, I mean, the number one overall pick in 1981 in a Super Bowl champ, Rodgers led the league his rookie year in rushing over vets like Earl Campbell. And I know you're a Cowboys fan, but sorry, Tony <laughs> Dorsett. Tonight, the George Rodgers Foundation is honored to welcome a former New Orleans Saint teammate of his, Mr. Archie Manning. Well, I have great memories of George. I was, um, you know, I was a veteran quarterback. I was in, uh, should have been about my tenth year, eleventh, maybe my eleventh year uh, in the league, and uh, had been there in New Orleans all that time. And um, we had a new coach, Bum Phillips, came over from uh, Houston. And of course, Bum had uh, had some some really good years in Houston with a great running back, one, one of the all-time great running backs, in Earl Campbell. And so. Um, uh, they started losing in Houston. What happens to coaches? They get fired. So Bum got fired. And the Saints went over and hired Bum to come to New Orleans. And uh, I guess you'd say someone else tried to straighten the Saints out. And uh, we, uh, the, the Saints had the first pick in the draft because we, uh, the year before 1980, we had had a god awful year, 1 in 15. So Nats had the first pick in the draft and picked George. Uh, George had won the Heisman at South Carolina. And, you know, it, it couldn't have been uh, really a better deal for, 
for Bum and his staff to come off of that offense that they ran in Houston, featuring Earl Campbell all those years, and then to turn around and, and draft a, another just big power back uh, like George. So he, he was a perfect fit. I, I think I think when a Heisman Trophy winner comes in, you know, a lot of times the veteran players, the other players are kind of, they're going to check him out pretty good. They kind of want to see, uh, does he have a little humility there? Uh, what's he going to be like in the locker room? What kind of teammate is he get? Is he all about himself? Is he a team guy? And George passed the test right away. I mean, as I said, George always had that big smile on his face. He laughs a lot. He, he was fun uh, in the locker room. And he went, when he hit the practice field, he hit on Sundays, he came to play. But I'm very proud of George. He told me about his foundation. He told me about the things he did. He also, George has offered a couple of times, he said, if you ever got some young people who you who, um, you want me to come speak to, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. So I'm very proud of George because he, he was a great, great Gamecock, great career there at South Carolina. He's, he loves his school. And uh, I'm very proud of him and congratulate him on uh, 40 years since he won the Heisman Trophy. It's just awesome, awesome to hear Archie recount those stories. And you know what? He had a pretty good career himself, too. So he's one that can speak to that for George and what he's done there. Yeah, Archie came in there. Obviously, things were not easy with the Saints back then, but he helped yeah. turn that ship around. And George, of course, uh, played a role with that, too. Now, I know they went 4-12 and that year. Sorry, George. But uh, that got things going. That got things going. And, uh, you know, George, of course, he went on to win a Super Bowl with the Washington Redskins, or the formerly known Washington Redskins. Washington takes, football team. It's take some time <laughs> to get used to that, Mitch. But we want to thank Archie Manning for taking the time uh, because that, that's that's what it's all about. Being able to see some of these former celebrities and, and teammates, or I should say former teammates and also celebrities be able to take the time to be able to do this, it speaks volumes of what George is all about. Yeah, and it also shows you just how much of an impact he's had on others around him. Mm -hmm. They talk about that infectious smile and that energy he brings into the room. It's on example here as you see all these people pouring in to show love and support for the George Rogers Foundation. And we hope you'll do the same here as this evening goes on. All right, still to come, we learn about George Rogers, a person from two people who know him very well. Hey George, Rick Sanford, your old teammate and friend. Just want to say I'm so proud of what you've done with the George Rogers Foundation and so happy to call you my teammate through the years. I'm, you've made such a great difference in so many young kids' lives and uh, the George Rogers Foundation is near and dear to my heart. So I just want to tell you, I'm so thankful that we have you in this community making a difference for young people. The Heisman Trophy is one of, if not the greatest individual honors in all of sports. Since its creation in 1935, the Heisman has been awarded 81 times to 80 recipients. You know the other one, Mitch? The other one? Uh, I don't know. Tell me. Archie Griffin. Got to go all the way back to 1974 ah. and 75, winning it back-to-back -back years. Now, of course, this is a very special honor. And as I learned with speaking with a Heisman Trophy trustee executive director, it's an honor that Rogers has represented USC and himself extremely well. I think it maybe took George a little while to get going after he first won the Heisman, but I think he gets it now. And I think he looks back, you know, with appreciation of, of where he came from and where he is today. Uh, I, I think that he understands, you know, uh, just as well as, as anyone else understands the, you know, the value of what it means to be a Heisman Trophy winner and the responsibility that comes along with that. Uh, but he doesn't shy away from that responsibility at all. And again, I told you when, when, when a new Heisman winner is crowned and George is right there to welcome him into the family, you know, George is the guy they look up to uh, and a leader. And uh, I think that uh, George, George gets it. You know, the Heisman Trust uh, was, you know, used to be the Downtown Athletic Club. It became the Heisman Trust uh, after the Downtown Athletic Club closed through the events of 9-11. Uh, the Trust is now a charitable trust. So um, <clears throat> most of our proceeds that come in go back out charitably. Uh, we have a, uh, a trust that we help uh, inner city schools and underprivileged kids uh, and, and education and sports. Uh, and George is always the first to raise his hand. He's always the first to be involved. He's always the first that wants to help out. And uh, he's been a great ambassador to the, to the Heisman, uh, to the Heisman winners and to the Heisman Trust. I mean, uh, you know he wears his heart on his sleeve. Uh, he, he's a great person. He's got that infectious laugh, infectious smile that everyone likes to uh, gravitate toward. Uh, so uh, George has is, is, is always been uh, special for us. Uh, and he's, and he's, 
every I think I've been involved with the this is 27 years for me with the Heisman being involved and I can't remember a Heisman weekend without George and I couldn't imagine the Heisman weekend without George in the future. Now, George will be the first person to tell you he hasn't gotten to where he is without the help of others. This is part of the reason why he reaches back and helps others himself. Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott is one of those that has supported George personally and his foundation over the years. And Lott says he remembers the run George got on to become South Carolina's first and only Heisman winner. Just being in the stands, uh, I go to all the football games, and just being in the stands like any other fan and just watching him and the determination that uh, he had and how hard he played. I just, that, that's, if I remember anything about his playing day, it's just how hard he played and how much he cared and he wanted to win so bad. And, and, and just seeing everybody pull for him to win the Heisman. You know, here's somebody from the University of South Carolina, you know, won the Heisman Trophy. And how he shared that with everybody. He, he hasn't kept it, you know, to himself and, uh, you know, shot away from publicity and people. He shares it. And I have different events with uh, young people, and I always call him first and say, George, can you be there? And he's always there. He brings his rings, he brings his trophy, and he talks to kids. And you know, that just makes me feel so good to see him interacting with young people. Still some fun left here this afternoon. Coming up, we hear from the man who's a problem with the guitar in his hands, Patrick Davis, joining us one more time. What's up, Big George? Patrick here, and I am playing a few songs for you tonight, but uh, I was having dinner this weekend in Nashville, and one of my dear friends showed up, and I wanted to make sure that he said a little bit about you right here. So, Mr. Steve, are you You're not going to ask me to sing with you, are you? You know what, maybe. I'm going to do a duet. George! Hey, how you doing, man? Congratulations for all you do. I remember when you won that Heisman in 1980. Awesome, man. Yeah, I coached some Gamecocks, Sterling Sharp and Robert Brooks over there at the Packers. I love Gamecocks. That's right. You should huh? love the Gamecocks. I love nothing, Gamecocks. Nothing like the Cox. Hey, That's right. You keep up the good work, man. <laughs> hey, we love you, George, and uh, congratulations on uh, 29 years of giving scholarships and monies to, uh, I believe, it's first-generation college students. So, love you, buddy. Fantastic. Welcome back to Watch Fox for tonight's special as we both raise money for George Rogers Foundation as well as honor the man who has brought home South Carolina's only Heisman Trophy. Well, as we go into, you know, the end of this show, we had some music a little bit beforehand and we're going to have some music now from a man named Patrick Davis. Of course, everyone in this town pretty much knows that man, but he sings one song in particular that just happens to have George's name in it. All right, big George, got one more for you. Um... This one is uh, the reason that we became buddies. Uh, I wrote this tune after a game, uh, a South Carolina game. I was home from Nashville and uh, watched us beat the number four ranked team in the country at the time. I believe it was the Ole Miss Rebels on a Thursday night. And I went back home and I decided I was gonna write Gamecock Nation, uh, a little anthem. And uh, I didn't think anybody was really gonna hear it, but uh, well, a lot of you folks have, so. Uh, Thank you for 40 years of, uh, you know, being good to our South Carolina Gamecocks after winning that Heisman. You didn't forget us. So uh, thank you, brother, and congratulations. And uh, on 29 years of supporting uh, first-generation college students, that's really awesome as well, my friend. And uh, anyways, much love, everybody. This is a big old Gamecock. Here we go. Well, I barely slept a week last night because I could hardly wait. Wake up this morning on game day So as soon as I heard that rooster crow I set off on the road Straight down I went into the capital city Where the pretty Carolina girls go Cause I've heard all the stories Of the great George Rogers Now back in 1980 made the whole nation father And I've seen that photograph Of young Steve Tanny Hill of an old Death Valley signing his name on the field And I loved it here 2001 If there were these brass rock oh, what else can I say? I'm just a big guy We know I come from a long line of cops just like me Who never stopped despite our history 
This road has been heartbreak and oh so many tears I know one day I won't have to say wait until next year Cause I watched every quarter of 2010 From the beat down of Bama to Atlanta's bitter end And I've cheered for Alshon Jeffrey, Melvin Ingram and Connor Shaw and you, Davion and Marcus were the best I ever saw. Yeah, and I hate them Georgia Bulldogs, Florida Gators, and Rocky Top. Oh, what else can I say? I'm just a big game cop. Yes, and when I die, I have just one request. So if you would you promise me this? Big George, thank you, brother. Put a keg on my coffin inside the state fairgrounds. Preserve chicken and biscuits with all the fixings. Gather everyone around. Have Coach Muschamp say some words. Let Darius lead the choir. And then send the boys off to destroy them damned old Clemson Tigers. Cause I've heard all the stories. Of the great George Rogers Now back in 1980 He made the whole nation holler And I've seen that photograph Of young Steve Tannehill Up in old Death Valley Signing his name on the field Yeah, and I love the hair Two thousand on a Bill Williams Bryce Rock Oh, what else can I say Until my dying day I'll be a South Carolina Yes, I will. Go Cox, and congratulations, Big George. Uh, a lot to be proud of, my friend, and uh, we will see you soon, all right? Y'all be safe out there, and don't forget, we all in this together. Bye, y'all. That dude's got a pin. He's got something, huh? He's got a pin. He's got a voice. It's mm. a deadly duo right there. Patrick Davis, ladies and gentlemen, a big thank you to him for being a part of this year's event. One of the many talented musicians we've seen <laughs> come through Columbia over the years. And we're going to take one last break, though, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed that performance. But before we wrap things up here on Watch Fox, stay with us for one more special message. Hi, George. It's Patty. I wanted to congratulate you on the 40-year anniversary of your Heisman Trophy. Years ago when you came on campus, everyone, all the Gamecock fans knew that you were going to be something special, and you were. You were special then, you're special now, and you will always be special to the USC fans and to me. Love you. Well, it's been a lot of fun here tonight, uh, just honoring George Rogers Foundation, another virtual fundraiser, the first virtual fundraiser, mm. and uh, obviously 40 years since winning that Heisman. We just want to send some thanks out to everybody out there watching and donating to the cause to help first-generation college students mm. get to their goal. Uh, of course, here at Watch Fox, want to uh, say thank you to our director, Brandon, and everybody else behind the scenes. Uh, thank you to yourself as yeah. well for corralling a lot of these people in here and making sure they support a great cause. And, of course, over at the foundation, a lot of other people to thank as well. Yeah, I mean, there's such a long list. We want to thank so many people over, obviously, at Watch Fox, Andre, Kevin Pasternick, Brett Smith. But then, like you mentioned, the foundation, you know, Meredith Taylor, Michelle Beagle, two people that helped us out so much with putting this together. Because, as you can imagine, when you have a lot of coaches and celebrities, it's not easy to, to corral. Not. But on top of that, like we saw the footage, there was a lot of great vintage footage, and that came from USC. Absolutely. Justin King and his department do a great job over there. They're taking care of us. Uh, they have taken care of us in continue to do so so thank you to everyone there and thank you once again to everybody that's gone online to whch.com continue gone online keep to putting the it foundation in. Keep pour going. that money in you know it's a sunday afternoon you're on the couch watching this so go ahead pop some more popcorn and get your cash app out and put that money in to george rogers foundation we thank you all here for joining us tonight we will see you coming up this week here on sports zone but until then have a great night and enjoy the rest of your weekend